Richie, let's introduce your number 10. And again, we'll have a, a few quick words about the ones that we've picked, but we'll dig into them once we can see the whole list. So right in there at number 10, oh. Richie, you had technique. Yeah, and I think this might be a very controversial one, and, I, and most people, I feel, might not agree. But for mm. me, I have to say that the technique as a whole would, would not be... Um, we, I've posted about this numerous times on our Instagram, about the whole idea of no perfect technique. The, the fact that technique is so variable and combat is so variable, you can't have perfect technique that suits every single situation. So like even, I always say, that if you take one uh, 100 fights, the first five seconds of them will never be the same in the 100 fights. So that just shows you how variable our sport is and combat sure. in general. So the, the idea of perfect technique here for me just kind of comes down a little bit. Of course, important in terms of efficiency and um, we'll, we'll see further up the line where it impacts other things as well. But for me, I, I placed this at number 10. Yeah. And again, as I jump into mine, it's important, like even how you look at this kind of listing is important. And I would look at this as like determinants, like, you know, uh, which of these are going to have more of an impact on a person getting to the top level. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, that has influenced maybe the order of some of mine as well. And I've put in at number 10, bravery, which is, you know, depending on your mindset, I suppose it could be a fixed or a variable trait, but I think you know, even just to address the challenge of being a top level performer takes a certain amount of bravery as well. You know, but there's a there's a lot of decisions mm -hmm. that that stem from there. So, like, it's uh, you know, there's there's nothing particularly complicated about that. But I just want to see some element of that in anyone that I'm looking at as a top level performer. It's just got to be there. Absolutely, so, yeah. But like, at the end of the day, as well, Adrian, like this is a combat sport between you and another human, technically fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you want to be a high level spar, you have to be brave and you have to be willing to to take risks and get get yourself in there. I think so. And although there's a lot of different ways you could describe it, that word just resonated for me. Yeah. Next, then you had a look at speed. Yeah, speed for me, interesting one at number nine. I I think that our sport, in terms of the motor abilities, is is quite speed dominant as opposed yeah. to like raw strength. Of course, to develop your absolute maximum power, we covered this in a, a session on Tuesday. You do need that strength foundation, and it's quite important. But I do have um, speed at this position at number nine. I think if you want to be successful, you have to have that element of speed, and um, it kind of links in with like intensity and urgency and things like that as well. So I think it's a very important thing to be able to score and get moving again. It's, it's, it's a point scoring system that we're in, so it, it's more important here to be quick and, and get in, get out, and get your scores on the board, I think. Can't really fault that logic. Um, for me, then, at number nine, I had flexibility. Um, and again, this one, uh, very much, uh, you know, a, a motor skill related thing almost where, uh, you know, a physical attribute, uh, it's something that can certainly be trained. Um, and developed mm -hmm. but we have to look at a sport where you're getting uh, more reward for the higher kicks and that requires flexibility now we can be very esoteric and talk about flexible mindset and you know other but I'm, I'm really yeah. am just talking about here the like motor skill the motor skill we're talking about the ability to kick high and to kick freely and get to those move three points and get those three pointers and i think you know where someone hasn't got the physical physical capability to stretch and get that three pointer uh, or where it requires so much compromise in body position that it, there are giveaways there are tells there are shows there are, you know that you have to get quite contrived about how the score is going to come i think it's a real challenge and it does limit their overall ability not that they can't be successful at all but it just makes the you know it makes things a little bit more challenging so i think that's just one Absolutely. that we can uh, we can look in at so carrying on richie's there we go there we go <laughs> quite similar in placing yeah so i yeah. actually linked in kicking ability with that as well for that purpose because you yeah. can be flexible of course but it's the ability to, to get those kicks off as well so flexibility itself is kind of tied in with the ability to control that range and things like that as well which is super important so if you just have floppy legs they call them like cheese string legs where they just flap everywhere sometimes yeah. that, that's not ideal and practical for sparring in itf you need to have that control to be able to put them on the target as well which is very important yeah that's really important i mean there are different types of flexibility and us being passively flexible is of absolutely no use in sparring we have to be able to use and to steal master hutton's phrase it has to be fit for purpose so the type of flexibility absolutely. that we have has to be specific to the discipline that we're going to be applying it to so if the flexibility doesn't matter unless it put lets you put your foot in their face i think is the mm. yeah the the two cents of it 
Um, so uh, I went up a little bit then and started looking at distance. Um, and there's obviously, uh, this is where I, I had a quite a bit of debate around some of mine here in the middle. And it's the yeah. chicken and egg kind of thing. And, it, you know, it's talking about the same kind of area of the match. That's really important. Um, and I don't know necessarily which one of these I'd put in in what order, but it, it doesn't really matter. Again, the ability to control distance in the ring um, between you and your opponent, your own ring position and spacing, and picking the right moments to uh, to execute a shot or to execute a counter uh, to be just in or just out of distance, you know, as appropriate. I think is uh, you know it's a very very important skill. Absolutely. Uh, we're up jumping seven. up to number seven for you. Mm, footwork and balance we talk about it so much here i think it's very very important and um, interestingly enough i kind of made a side note to myself that I, I in my classes i generally spend a lot of time on kicking ability and flexibility because i think they cover a range of other facets in taekwondo and yeah. i actually probably spend a little bit more time on the footwork stuff so that might be something that kind of you know it, it's a good as we said it allows you to reverse engineer and think about this a little more so maybe i'll do a little bit of an adjustment there but you can't argue with the importance of footwork. It, everything starts with the foundation of your feet, putting yourself in the correct position, being able to balance, to move. We talked about it so much, especially on some recent episodes. Uh, very, yeah. very important skill. But it just shows you as well, like the reason that I'm struggling to put some of these things in order is because they're not discrete skills. They're integrated yeah. skills. So they belong very to each other. You can't develop them in isolation. So I think that's kind of the important uh, mm. concept for me there. And uh, oh, have I jumped one? There you go. That's... Uh, Oh, maybe I, I, I did it on purpose. I don't know. Um, ah, yeah. So, it kind of relates to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, I have yeah. at seven, you have at six. Yeah, very, exactly. Very it, it's it's just, uh, you know, it, and it's the same discussion, but like we're really, really talking about the same things there. Um, so uh, my number seven there is rhythm or timing. And I think, uh, you know, as we go over to yours, it's, uh, I, I remember this one when you sent it there to me just go. before we came on. So why, Richie, are we arriving at that kind of scenario where we're looking at the overall movement, the rhythm, the distance, you know, of the competitors in that central block? I mean, maybe we'll dig into that a bit later, but I think it's very interesting yeah. that, you know, that we've arrived with those in the middle. Um, definitely. And I definitely, once we get through our list as well, I definitely want to hash out the, the fact that we have timing and distance in different order. I think that's yeah. a very, very interesting discussion. And I've went back and forth on it numerous times. And um, so we'll definitely sure. get into that later in the show. Excuse me, for sure. So uh, distance management and awareness. I think, like as yeah. I said, I have the, you know, the, the, the way that I've ordered that is very, very different. But uh, I think like you, it's, a, you know, that's a crucial one. Mm. it's very simple it, it for me it's the ability to either hit and or not get hit um, and obviously as we said there's so many other things that are interconnected with this to make it happen and that's why yeah. sometimes it of course this is just a fun exercise for us to do and um, but of course as well you have to think of what comes with it and i think just to be able to be aware of your distance where you can land the shot where is my distance to be able to land something and the management of the distance especially mm -hmm. on the defensive side of things is very very important for sure. Um, so let me have a look. Uh, there we go. Uh, so then I jump up into number five. So we're kind of just in that upper middle of the pack here. And mm -hmm. I was talking about stamina. And, uh, you know, it's it's interesting that, you know, for yourself. Yeah. I, I think we're actually talking about the same thing uh, between yeah. those it's, two. It's, it's it's just the words really and, and, and how you kind of um, articulate it is a bit different, but we're looking at the same thing, the endurance really. Can you keep going throughout the round? Can you be able to get that explosive yeah. power throughout your round? It, it's really looking at endurance. And whether, no matter what word you put on it, it's the same type of thing we're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're really talking about the energy systems and the ability to sustain mm -hmm. energy production from whether it's the aerobic or the anaerobic energy systems. We're looking at that ability to sustain effort over time. And, you know, yeah. I think, you know, for me, I have a very clear picture in my head about why I let it slide up the, the, the chart like that ahead of some things that I think, you know, I would definitely spend more of my time training some of the other things. If you very know what I mean. true. I was the exact same. Yeah. yeah. But yet I value it I and I look at it as a determinant and place I it higher. As well, the context of this, Adrian, of the elite athlete and at the very top level has a lot yeah. to play with this because 
90% of our students for everybody here who's watching, who's an instructor or a coach, we're not dealing with elite level students. It's your your everyday student who's a yellow belt, green belt, whatever. And yeah. um, that's not really going to be a massive, massive focus. And you're going to try to draw from your regular training to, to build that energy system, even through just regular sparring, through your exercises and, and your just your general physical training. You're going to be trying to build on that. And then at the higher level, you're going to really need to take that to the next level. And I think it, like what we're talking about as well, you know, for, even for our national level competitors, when they spar in country, a lot of the time, like Ireland, we've got, you know, a, a reasonable sized organization, but for most weight divisions, you don't have many matches at a national level event and certainly not many matches where you're pushed. If you're top level, you might have three or four matches, even if we're doing like a repetition or whatever, you might end up with four or five matches, but you're not going to be pushed in all of them you know, to the level mm -hmm. that you would be when you go to European World Championships, European World Cup. And so for that reason, I think as a determinant of the higher level of performance, that shift in the stamina then becomes important to us again. Definitely. And um, I think as well on that, it's one of these skills that you kind of, you can almost train by yourself. Um, yes. So you don't actually need like a lot of partners. You can, and it can definitely improve it. But as we see in our top three, top four for myself and yourself, it's, it's going to be some things that are um, very much related to working with another human body. Yeah. And I mean, that's where my number four jumps in and it's talking about tactical acumen. And that really for me is looking at the, um, you know, the competitor's understanding of, you know, the interactions that happen in the match and the, uh, you know, it's them understanding. Like, I, funnily enough, I didn't put strategic here. Uh, and it's not yeah. in my list. It's not in my list. And I mean, for me, within Taekwondo Sparring, I do think that, you know, the, the strategy side of things is very, very important. But I think the strategy is, uh, like, in a good working relationship, it's something that's agreed and discussed between the coach and the athlete. So strategy can would you, have... Would you say that as, like, a, a pre-game plan? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, so in other words, like to, to put it this way, you know, if the strategy in the match is that, well, we're going to apply a lot of intensity in the first and last 30 seconds, um, you know, in order to maybe overload at the beginning of the end, or else it's going to be a case of, right, we'll, we'll talk about uh, recognizing a transition or momentum transition and pushing hard mm -hmm. there, or deciding that you're going to be passive and invite the other person to try and make them attack because you feel like you're, you've got a better counter game than they have an attacking game or you're going to look to dominate the center like the yep. bigger picture of it i think is something that's varies opponent by opponent you know very often and it's kind of a discussion that can happen weeks months in advance and be planned mm -hmm. for whereas i think the the tactical part of it is the understanding of like like you said it's the the contrast so oh he's attacking on, an, on on a high level i need to be looking at a low counter he's attacking with a round shot i need a direct counter he's attacking with a direct okay. shot i need a round counter um he's heading for the corner, I want to give him a space so I can see he's coming out here. You know, it's all the kind of things where it's the fundamentals. It's the live the, stuff. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the fundamentals be, behind the decisions you're going to make. It's knowing yeah. what they're all anchored on and based on and being astute enough that when the problem is presented to you in the cold light of day, you can go, well, here's two or three solutions to it that I could try and being sharp enough to be able to look for them. Because I think if you're relying on your coach to, to, to hear that in the ring, mm -hmm it's too late. Um, I think the, the, the athlete needs to have a, a sound enough tactical understanding of the game of sparring as it applies to them, that they can start solving their own problems. Uh, yeah. So, and you know. I, like, it's very interesting. We're going to see where I'm going with this as well. Like, just yeah. for context, we, we haven't spoken about this beforehand. We made our, our lists independently. Yeah. Richie and, uh, sent me his just, list just before we went live. So, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's funny to see the, the kind of the the contrast in ways but also the similarities and here you go just like what you're talking about just another way yeah. of presenting it really decision making and adaptability for me so important especially in our short rounds to be able to adapt like you just said there adrian on the fly is yeah. so so important and to make those correct decisions very very similar to what you're talking about with the tactical stuff yeah i think this gets particularly funny because my one is teacups and uh for those who uh haven't uh uh, spent much time reading uh, rugby biographies and that kind of thing. Uh, this is thinking correctly under pressure situations. And uh, uh, it's it, the concept here is very much just what Richie was talking about. It's the ability to actually select, you know, the right, the right tactics, the right technique, the right, you know, uh, basically the right decision 
even when you're under time pressure under physical pressure when you're fatigued and tired when you know there, there's a weight of expectation on you and all the rest of it that builds up to a pressure situation and again being able to find the right solution outside of match conditions is nice that's coaching being able to find the yeah. you know the right solution while you're having to you know basically dig yourself out of a hole with 15 seconds left and whatever it is that's that's sparring and i think i value that very very highly and, and that's why that obviously we shape our training towards that Absolutely. And I think that that's why we've both placed those kind of skills or attributes, whatever you want to call them, much higher than technique, for example. Yeah. Where, for example, there's me putting technique at number 10. So it'll be very interesting to see other people's opinions on this. So if you are watching, maybe get involved in the comments here. Let us, yeah. let us know, do you value technique over the tactics? We, we, we break it into tactics as, as a whole group. Mm. Or would you be on the opposite side of the fence? So I think that's an interesting discussion where people do differ in their um, philosophy on that for sure so going into richie's top uh, top two so with the the silver medal position understanding <laughs> or experience yeah okay. so for me that's that's just like when i think about this being in the sport myself for 20 plus years if right now in the middle of covid and i haven't sparred for so long i feel that if i went in and sparred with somebody i I'm able to perform not at a very, very high level, but my understanding and my experience gives me a lot of outs and it gives me a lot of ways to be able to kind of manage. Uh, and I think when you carry this with the backing of all the other stuff and being in, at your peak performance, ready to go and perform at the championships, it's a massive, massive thing. And it can be as simple as just, we talk about it as chunking sometimes, yeah. just the feeling you have and it's connected with timing and things like that. But just that experience that you have to be able to draw on, very simple, even at the dying stages of a match, um, just having that awareness and, and the game state understanding to be able to do something correctly that will give you a correct outcome. Those type of things are very, very important. And when they're most important is at the critical stages, the, the last 10 seconds, those type of situations in a match. And for me, that's why it's very, very important. Yeah, they always talk about it in the likes of the, the major televised field sports or whatever. Like, And they'll talk about, you know, that older, you know, midfielder defender, you know, that, that kind yeah. of thing. And they'll say uh, they, don't, they can lose that yard of, of pace because they know where to stand. They, they can read yeah. the overall game better and they know where to stand. They know where to place themselves, you know, and, and you see sometimes, you know, and it's rare enough that you'd have a forward lasting into their mid 30s and so on and still scoring well. And so much of it is just the anticipation. It's knowing that this run will go here, that player will go there, and you find your space. And I think with Intake Wando, you just find that they're, you know, with a certain level of experience, as long as the match is winnable, these experienced people find a way to win. They they don't mm. necessarily outfight their opponent, whether it's running down a clock, whether it's taking advantage of warnings or fouls, whether it's, um, you know, playing a, a negative game or neutralizing something or it's capitalizing that one show that the other person has until it matters uh being more physical you know recognizing a break point whatever it happens to be experience will carry people through at that stage it's very important at the critical stages look at last week's guest hang louis yeah after winning the, the european championships at 40 years of age most people aren't doing that if we look at the, no. the average age of people winning international championships worlds and european right now i would say it's generally average under 25 and um, so to be able to do that 40 years of age it, it's that that just critical decision points at the mm -hmm. important moments that he's able to make based on his experience and he talked about it last week's show go check it out if you haven't watched it it's For very sure. very important so uh my number two then is uh resilience two ways so i kind of put this in because i think uh it's a very very important one uh for me both mentally and physically being resilient and what we're what i'm really talking about there on the physical side if it's very easy is how prone to injury are you because if you look at okay. a, a career you know if you're spending chunks of particular seasons on that prehab rehab you know injured you know rehab re-injured like if you're on that train it's really really difficult to develop the consistent improvement over time that you really really want and it adds up it's it's a really a cumulative thing and of course it's digging away at your mindset you're not like taking your your little wins and building on them you're taking your setbacks and trying to like 
you're 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 basically being defensive in your mindset rather than mm. you know uh, building a, a more positive aggressive mindset. And I think that's a like for me that resilience, uh, you know, the physically not being too breakable is a huge deal, and it you know it matters over this the span of a longer career. I mean, you know, Hong has managed to get to forty would be one example, still competing at the highest level. You don't do that if you break down every three months. You know, that's just, you know, yeah. and it, like that's not a judgment on anyone, but it's it's an element of if you're, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you're injury prone, it is much, much, much harder. And then on the mental side of it, it is a journey. Like staying mm. with Taekwondo at the top level over a career is a journey and you need to be resilient against the change in personal circumstances the life transitions you know the financial struggles the wins the losses the injuries the whatever else that comes by you and i think being able to rephrase all of that stuff put yourself in a challenge state and go for it time and time again is resilience and it's it's really really important and so for me when you see that in someone i think that's a really predictive skill that's a great one i i would have never thought about that but it's so true um, it's just, it's funny that things like that you kind of take for granted, isn't it? That you I, just expect people to be there. Yeah. You expect and, them to be able to perform. And to be fair, it's one of the pitfalls of doing a list like this. You can't touch everything. Like it's, you know, we're people, yeah, yeah. we're complex, but you know, we, we try. <laughs> we that's try. That's a great one. No, that's a great, that's a great shout. Let's have a look at the number one. We don't have a drum roll, no? Ah, oh, I can probably do a drum roll. <laughs> I, I feel like it wouldn't be fair just to give myself a drum roll then if you don't get one though. Like, I mean, that's... Uh, Maybe maybe that's not a thing, but yeah. Uh, but li yeah. listen, here's my number one mindset. So yeah. like I kind of cheated on this and I, I compiled them all together. Right there we go. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah yeah yeah. Um. So yeah, I kind of cheated on this one. Like I'm talking about desire and what's your what's your why and that's your driving force when the going gets tough. Like you said, even with the resilience, what's going to keep driving you? What's going to keep pushing you forward? Then you have the confidence. So like you need to have the confidence at that high level your self-belief the self-esteem the belief in yourself to get the job done when the chips are down yeah and then things like um composure so kind of like your teacups idea here being able to control yourself in the positions when when things are like for example you're very anxious or the crowd is getting behind you you're, you're not leaving your emotions sway your decision making so that you can see that our top couple here maybe in the top five are very much interconnected and and they kind of influence each other or not a lot so I think that the mindset is very important. And although some people kind of have this as um, as their innate ability kind of almost to carry themselves a little bit different, it is something that you can work on. And we have done lots and lots of videos and we, we've talked about this numerous times that there, there are ways to work on this and to provide a little bit of a system that works specifically for you. So um, for me, I think it's the number one thing and it's the driving force behind all those other things. Super. Yeah, and I, I don't think I'm going to like massively surprise um i don't know should we have a little bit of a there we go we can have a little bit of a sound effect to finish it off on but again like it's it's totally cheating and finding a you know a, a way to encompass a lot of things with the uh with the one word but like it, for me again finding the the why uh is and even quite early on like making sure like finding that the performance is not for that experience of winning a medal and standing on a podium alone like mm. finding that the training the the decisions that you make on the on, on the journey are all for a greater purpose that means something more to you than the experience of having a gold medal put around your neck matters a huge amount because for me that lends to the resilience side of things it lends to the like the ability to make decisions or over lifestyle transitions that will get you coming back it'll help you deal with the motivation because what is the the, the absence of motivation is that you don't have a strong enough purpose like you know you you don't yeah like it doesn't drive you enough because it's not strong enough in itself so for me yeah having someone with a really definite why is like rare like it's so 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 rare and when you find that especially when you win yeah yeah it's so easy to just go well i've it done now and i walk yep. away so finding someone who has a really definite uh intrinsic why to why they're going to go back and train again and do the next thing again and like that will that will definitely be a little bit predictive of how much the person can enjoy the journey in victory in defeat with setbacks with you know the, the worst curse of all you know being super successful super fast you know and all those kind of things 
you know, it, it really is a big deal. And I think it's something that people need to connect with early. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's a hard Couldn't one. agree more. And I have to say, like, from a personal point of view, that was one of the ones as well that I feel like was the difference between um, getting to the top level and not. Like, from my own point of view, getting to, like, bronze medal stages for a couple of years on the trot and individual sparring. It was the difference between me not making the final that why that that drive this the, as you said like the lifestyle choices all of that stuff and when mm. you when you sit back and you think about it that is the purpose and there's nothing wrong with that once you know what your why is maybe you're doing it for a different reason to other people but you, then you can't be disappointed when you don't get to the top step of the podium you got to yeah. understand that 